This is Greg Pruitt, the author of Extreme Prayer. In, in chapter one, I start off with a story about when we had first gotten to the village context and, uh, you know, we didn't even have uh, a car. We, we were riding bicycles. Uh, you know, we're out eight or more hours drive into the bush and here we are riding bicycles back and forth to the market and uh, it was really rough. And uh, one morning, you know, we're, <laughs> we had moved into this little uh, kind of a shack, I guess you could call it, that one of the elders of the church had uh, gotten all of his stuff out and let us live in this place uh, because, you know, it was better than the grass roofed huts. It had tin roof on it and he was offering nothing but his best. And uh, one day we were in there and I remember hearing this lady just wailing and crying just to, to break your heart, to hear it. And I, uh, I went out and I asked my friend, um, Hey, what, what's wrong with this lady? And he said, well, um, her son is sick and she believes he's going to die. And I said, well, you know, could we maybe look at this child and see? And they said, you know what? Uh, we took the child out to the witch doctor and, uh, in the bush, but you know what? We'll go get him and we'll bring him back here and you can treat him. I said, wait, wait, what? As they're walking off, I'm like, wait, did, did he say treat? You know, so I, uh, they brought the kid back. And when we, when they brought us to the child and we had looked down and saw he, they had laid him on the floor of this mud hut. And, um, you know, they were, they were right. He was sick. You know, his, his breathing was just labored and his, um, his eyes didn't respond to the flashlight that I had with me. I would shine a little light on his eyes and his eyes wouldn't die, wouldn't change. They were just dilated. And I remember, Oh yeah. Pupils fixed and dilated. This is like, I've watched enough emergency television to know this is like really bad. I think she's probably right. He is going to die. And then I thought, well, you know, what, what could we do to, to, to treat this child? You know, he surely he doesn't have meningitis because I don't have any medicine for that. Uh, but you know, this could be caused by cerebral malaria, but I don't know how to give uh, chloroquine, you know, malaria medicine to a, to a, an unconscious child. And it's in tablet form, you know, and I'm talking like, like I know something about being a doctor or something. And, and all of a sudden I thought to myself, you know, I turned and I said, Hey, you know, um, we're missionaries. We, we ought to like pray for this kid. And the word pray came out of my mouth. And at the exact same moment, I saw his eyes blink out of the corner of my eye. And I looked down and his eyes had started to focus. And he was looking around the room. And I said, you know what? We need to hurry up and pray for this kid because I think God is healing him. And we prayed for him. And by that night, he was, he was better. And we were like su more surprised than a missionary should be at an answer to a prayer, I think. And I remember realizing at that moment that God is real. And he wants us to learn to rely on him first and not as some kind of a last resort. And so... You know, fast forward 12 years to a moment when, you know, we had our house built and things were a lot nicer at that point. We had a satellite telephone and I get this phone call on the satellite telephone from the board of directors of Pioneer Bible Translators asking me to become the next president of Pioneer Bible Translators. Well, at first I was pretty flattered. I was like, yeah, this, you know, I'm. Uh, you know, that's, that's amazing. And then I started to realize, no, I'm in big trouble here because I'm going to get over there to this first board meeting and they're going to say, President Pruitt, tell us uh, what, what will we do? What will be our strategy in the future for success of our ministry and mission accomplishment? And uh, basically I had nothing. And I was like, you know, I'm going to have to come up with a strategy and it has to work because people are going to know if it does or if it doesn't, it's going to be obvious to everybody. And so um, 
I said, you know what? I am a Bible translator. What if I look in the Bible and see if I can find something that might help me in there? And as I started to look, because I was like, I knew we needed a source of power because, you know, um, people had been coming to us uh, in some cases for five years, some cases for up to eight years, people had been asking, begging us for the word of God translated in their language. And we just kept having to say, I'm sorry, we don't have a way to help you with that. We just don't have the resources right now. We don't have the people. We don't have the money. Uh, and so I, I said, you know what? That's not good enough. We need to find a way for God to move in great power. I looked in the Bible and I found all these amazing open-ended promises that Jesus uh, proclaimed about prayer. You could kind of do a, a, a search in an old translation for the word whatsoever and find a lot of these where, um, where he just made completely open-ended promises about things that he would do uh, in answer to our prayer. And, that, and I thought to myself, wow. Okay, wait a minute. What if this would actually work? I mean, like, what if instead of making, instead of like praying about our strategies, what if we made prayer the strategy? And, and that's what we did. And I came back to the board and I was like, we are going to pray. This is our strategy. We're going to pray the kinds of prayers that Jesus promised that he would answer with infinite power. And so, you know, I don't know if you could picture yourself in my place in that board meeting, but, you know, it might have been a little bit of a tricky sell uh, that, you know, what, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to pray. You know, well, well <laughs> we've already been doing that, Dr. Pruitt, you know, or I wasn't a doctor then, you know. We've already been doing that. You know, everybody does that. You know, no, 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 no. You don't understand. We're gonna we're gonna read and and study all these different promises of open-ended, infinite power that we find in scripture that Jesus made. And we're gonna structure our whole ministry. We're just gonna core everything around praying the kinds of prayers that Jesus promised he would answer with infinite power. Turns out. It was probably the best idea I've ever had. Uh, maybe the only good idea I've ever really had. And I actually don't need to. It's good enough just by itself. I've been doing this now for like going on 18 years as I'm making this recording. And uh, I, I don't know that I've ever had another really great idea besides this one. And so um, I just want to invite you, uh, the, the next chapters are going to be about these principles that are in scripture and just begin to, to imagine what could my life be like if I centered my whole life and ministry and work around praying the kinds of prayers that Jesus promised he would answer with infinite power.